We just landed here. Actually, it took us a few hours to get here from the airport with all the people. Our first stop was Dunkin' Donuts because it's my first stop every day. The donuts are just so much better, so like pretty ridiculous. It's like a fine pastry shop in the U.S. or something. Sometimes I like, I've tweeted at Dunkin' Donuts in the U.S. like, can you please make the donuts like in Korea? I'd actually eat them. They didn't respond. The food that we do at Parachute is Korean American, but it is actually kind of global and eclectic. It has a lot of the flavor profiles, the textures that come from Korean cuisine, and also the communal kind of dining, but it definitely has the American sense of, we can do what we want here, let's create something new. In early January, we're taking the whole Parachute team to Korea. I think the idea that we're all going together is pretty meaningful. I'm excited to go with Ellison and my husband. Ellison is our sous chef. He is second generation Korean, but hasn't been to Korea. There's Enoch and Angela Kim who have both been to Korea, but not coming from a culinary perspective. I'm really excited to see them be challenged and get some new ideas. Beverly and I first met. We hit it off really well together, and we knew that we wanted to get married and do like a restaurant together and traveled together, but we ended up having a child first. So those plans were kind of put on a halt. <laughs> what is that? I'm really excited to go to Korea with day one. So I ended up asking my parents to come with me. It was kind of like a win-win for us. Like they always helped me with, with day one. Really, we want to dive into the culture, mostly the culture behind food. Korean barbecue was the first group dinner that we had together. We had the kai bee, it was like grilled short ribs. But it was interesting, it was cut differently. It was almost cut in like these long strips instead of chunks, like squares, which I'm used to getting. I feel like I'm still so jet lag right now, but it's still it's so surreal that we're all I know. Here on the other side of the planet. The butterfly effect of things is crazy. We had this crazy thought too. If John had never gone to Korea, none of us would be here. Yeah because he wouldn't have been interested enough to write me an email. Yeah. We wouldn't have had day one. <laughs> this was a good trip to pick up where I left off. I lived in Korea for the spring and summer of 2008. When I was working in New York, like my job was kind of, seemed like a dead end job. because was at a point in my career where I knew I wanted to do something different. I worked with some friends from Korea that were on like a job exchange program. I found a food arts magazine, Im Ji Ho, was on the cover. So my friend Nicole actually ended up calling for me to see if I could get a stage. He didn't really know what that means other than like, you know, work for free. And he's like, ah, you know, I've never really felt good about this before, but I feel good about this one. Thanks for coming. This is tteokbokki, Korean rice cake, spicy rice cake, traditional uh, street food. This was the first thing on my list to eat when I got here. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Hanjang Market is awesome. It's a place where a lot of street food happens, but mainly they're famous for their bingdae duck, the mung bean pancake. 
ground mung beans and bean sprouts fried in like a half an inch of oil, like a shallow fry. So it's like this kind of crispy and soft pancake. Mm. I was like thinking because they're really big that they're being kind of heavy, but they're like, it's like super crispy and then inside is really, really, really soft. Part of Kwanjang Market is also known for their yuke, which is the beef tartare. I didn't realize that the Korean beef tartare comes on a full plate with a big chicken egg. Also, one of the specialties was liver. Oh, man. Is it difficult? It's difficult. It's challenging. We're at the Noryangjin Market, a seafood market. It's the Korea's oldest seafood market. It's huge. It's just unbelievably big. I'm glad Daewon gets to see this, and I hope he has some memories of this. You never know what they're going to remember when they're five and six. But I think there's some memorable experiences on this trip. How far are we from Chicago? 400 miles. Mm, that's a good guess. 4,000 miles. Maybe that's more like it. Maybe even more than that. 600 miles. Yeah. <laughs> One of our cooks had spotted that there was some live octopus in the tank and it was still squirming around and moving around. Day one was just like, he was having so much fun with it. Oh, I'm not eating it. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try it. I am not. You got it, you got it. I am not. I'm gonna have to try it. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, man. It's weird when it kind of like sticks to your yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. cheeks a little bit. Uh -huh. It's so it tastes really fresh. So if you can get past the fact that it's like moving and sticking inside of your mouth, it was actually really good. Day one. Hi, Chad. We just got the biggest king crab ever. <laughs> the biggest one in the tank. And it's going to be able to feed the 17 people. What they're going to do is steam the legs and turn the head into uh, fried rice. After we purchased our seafood, there's a restaurant like literally 20 feet away. And apparently since we came in winter, it's the best for them to experience how fresh the seafood really was from going to purchasing it and literally like 30 minutes later having lunch and eating it. This is awesome. They had the sashimi of Suzuki and red snapper, and they had lettuce leaves of red oak and also sesame leaves to make some little sandwiches. And then the big crab came out. It was fully steamed. Oh, 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 they handed us like 10 large scissors, and then Daewon goes over there and he starts like racking at it. Right. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> And I was like, you know what? Can we just like have this done outside? Because <laughs> it was just like really huge. Look at this big piece of crab just from half of the crab leg. It's so sweet and like tender. Uh, I've never had anything like it. Like life. fresh, like. Oh. I think when we start planning the trip to Korea, we got to go to the restaurant at work. That was definitely going to be on the itinerary. And like, I want to take you all there and so you can see it. We were just thinking, let's just contact Chef in Jiho, see if we can just have our whole group have lunch there. Apparently, it was very, very important for his manager to meet us. He shows up, he's got, you know, like a big white coat with like fur on the hood and 
So this huge tour bus picks us up in Seoul in front of Hongi University. 선생님이 여기 힐링 센터 이 사업을 하기 위해서 하고 있었다가 선생님이 이제 요리사지 사업가는 아니잖아요. 그리고 이런 뭐 경영이나 이런 것들이나 좀 미숙한 부분이 있다 보니까 그 부분에 대해서 이제 저를 이제 섭외를 하신 거죠. The manager had his itinerary and he was sticking to it like very strictly. 아이가 있고 그리고 한두 시간 버스 타고 가기 때문에 한 시간 후에 휴게소 한번 들릴 거라고. 만나기 위해 한옥 학교에 찾아온 사람 임지호 요리사와 아주 특별한 인연의 미국인 요리사 존 클라 How are you? Good to see you. Wife. This is my wife, Beverly. Yeah. 안녕하십니까. 내가 어디에서 찾을 것인가라는 같이 찾아가는. 그 프렌드 같이 찾아가는 친구다 이렇게 생각하라. 처음 봤을 때그 굉장히 고요한 스타일인데 더 성숙한 것 같아. Actually, we've been want, meaning to come back to see him for like seven years. 그러니까 좀그 보살펴주고 그 어. 정말 감사하고 어. 보고 싶어서 다시 왔다고. 어. 어. 안에 한번 봐봐. 잠깐 이렇게 레스터벤 싸. 존이 한국을 7년 만에 와서 이제 제가 존한테 맛을 보여줄 수 있는 게그 우리 한국의 나물, 그 다음에 고기와 뭐 생선과 이렇게 여러 가지로 우리 또그 밑반찬 네, 그런 것들을 골고루 해서 이렇게 먹어보게 한 거예요. 자기 나름대로 또 열심히 해서 지금 레스토랑도 하고 있고 아기도 있고 앞으로도 이제 세상을 향해서 더 크게 뻗어나가리라는 그런 염원을 담아서 그 친구에게 이런 맛을 보여주고 싶었어요. 흐름기 사람을 싶다 만든 게좀 까다롭고 좀 분주한 게좀 많잖아요. 괜찮나요? It's just so clean. And like, if you don't put a lot of care into it, it could easily be not good. So yeah, in that way, it's harder. I feel because it's not masked. Then we went back to one of the houses on the property. Everyone tried on a bunch of um, hanboks, which are like the traditional Korean dress. Took some pictures. It was cool. I think everyone had a good time. I actually didn't do it. I just felt like I didn't want to take off my shoes and clothes again. So, 이번에 가실 곳은 그 세계 최대 실내 빙등 그 어려운 광장이라고 지금 현재 이 시각에 북한에서도. 수소 폭탄 발뭐 발파했다고 뉴스가 나오고 있는데 그래서 지금 전군 경계 태세라고 우리 한국이 또 불구하고 이렇게 안전하게 방광할 수 있다고. 어른나라 합천입니다. 아주 많이 많은 중이고요. We show up to this ice museum, and it's like a walk-in refrigerator under mountain bunker full of like ice castles and slides. 
Apparently it's like one of the largest ice museums ever, but it's in like in this small little town of 20,000 people. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get out of here before we get frostbite. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, your tongue will stick to that. And then we drive probably about like 15, 20 minutes. Like we're like, where are we going? And we go to this very like small hole in the wall restaurant. Guksu is like the specialty of that small town, which is a cold buckwheat noodle made with dongchimi, which is a radish kimchi broth boiled egg and the pickled radish on there. We're all freezing, and then we go for naengmyeon. You think it's the last thing you want to eat when you're frozen, but actually Chef Im Ji-ho was telling us about how Koreans like to fight cold with cold, hot with hot. It's kind of like tradition to help kind of regulate your body temperature. The chef of this restaurant has been cooking the same thing for 40 years. Getting ready to cook breakfast right now. He has like a like tons of stuff here. I mean, all these different salts, nuts, dried fruits, and seeds, and spices. It's very abnormal to find any of this in Korean cooking. His cooking is very spontaneous, so I, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen yet. So I'll do my best to help. ジェウリアンスタイルのグナンチュジョアミョッコ、グナン。クー、オッケー。there's no frying pans, so he cooked everything in giant mixing bowls. He cooks like in this whirlwind and just turns meals out of nothing into something. He's got this green car called a chairman. It's like a hundred thousand dollar car. He's really driving like 75 miles per hour like around these turns. And then we get to this Vietnam Memorial, like at the top of a mountain. And he goes like starts driving up the walking path. First thing he does is makes a beeline right for the stereo and puts in some like 
chanting music. Okay. Yes. I like it. Apparently he like goes on like these tangents of painting and he would get like skin poisoning from too much paint. And his son was like, he doesn't care. Like he just wants to do what he wants to do. And I think that's like, I mean, that's, that's how he is. He just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, just a huge learning experience for me to, to learn another way of life and, and um, created a much more open mind. You're a great man. <laughs> <laughs> My first experience here, that was the catapult like of inspiration that pushed me to the, you know, to the restaurant and then ultimately to here. But I think that eight years of like busting my ass for so long was, you know, having a kid and opening a restaurant, it was, you know, this revisit again is like kind of like a new, a new start. Like, let's see what happens this year. <laughs> <laughs>